it's One Man Book Club. Hey everyone, welcome back to One Man Book Club where we champion empowering readers, building community, and spreading the joy of reading. I'm Dan, the Reading Dad, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, remember, if you uh, are a book nerd like me who wants to fly your book nerd flag high with their t-shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts, head over to onemanbookclub.com and choose some awesome gear from One Man Book Club, the shop. You guys are gonna love it. Uh, if, you're an, if you're a Kindle e-reader fan like me, you've probably been seeing some tech articles and posts about yet another reason Amazon is the evil empire by taking away the ability to download our Kindle ebook files to your computers. Today we're gonna to dive into this change Amazon is making that has stirred up a lot of discussion. The removal of the download and transfer via USB feature. If you log into your Amazon account, go to accounts and lists, select content library, then books, you'll see your entire library of Kindle ebooks. To the far right of the book title, you see more actions, select more actions, and then select download and transfer to USB. When you do, you'll see a dialog box appear where you select what device you want to send the book to. Now this is what has everyone up in arms. There's a note in this dialog box that says, starting February 26, 2025, the download and transfer via USB option will no longer be available. You can still send your Kindle books to your Wi-Fi enabled devices by selecting the deliver or remove from device. Okay, here's the deal. In the past, when you select the download and transfer to USB option, the selected ebook file will be downloaded to your computer. And then you can connect your Kindle to your computer via USB and transfer the ebook title to your Kindle. And that's it. This is the feature that's going away. And this is what is causing the spikes in blood pressure. To understand why this change is happening, let's look back at the history of this feature, the evolution of digital reading and how digital ownership actually works. So let's start with a bit of history. The first Kindle was released back in 2007, and it revolutionized how we read. Initially, Kindles relied heavily on the download and transfer to USB feature, because in those early days of e-readers, Wi-Fi wasn't quite as ubiquitous as it is now, and many users, especially those in areas with limited internet access, needed a way to get their books onto their devices. So the USB transfer method provided that crucial link. It was a way to get books onto devices when directed downloads to your Kindle wasn't always an option. Now over time, as Wi-Fi became more prevalent and Kindle devices themselves gained built-in cellular connectivity, the way people accessed eBooks began to shift. Direct downloads to devices from, um, became the norm for both users. However, download and transfer via USB remained, uh, remained prominently used by two groups, those who sideloaded books from sources other than Kindle store, and those who preferred to manage their eBook libraries by manually um, downloading the files, the ebook files on their computers for backup or archival processes, and they use that feature to do this. Now, this brings us to a crucial point about digital content ownership. Recently, Amazon has updated the Kindle text you see when you buy a Kindle book in the United States. This change clarifies something that's been true for a while, but is now more explicit. You're buying a license to use the content. You're not buying ownership of the ebook itself. This isn't a new concept in the digital world. It's how most digital content licenses work, whether it's eBooks or music or movies, but the updated wording makes it very clear. And it's important to understand this licensing model as we discuss the removal of the USB download feature. This is the model that allows them to make the changes to how you access content. So with that understanding of digital licensing in mind, let's talk about the change itself. Amazon is discontinuing the ability to download Kindle ebook files directly to your computer. This change takes effect on February 26th. Here's the most important thing to understand. This change does not affect the vast majority of Kindle users. If you buy books from the Kindle store and download them directly to your Kindle device using Wi-Fi or your internet connection uh, or your phone cellular, connect cellular connection, you will not be affected. If you use the Kindle app on your phone, tablet, or computer, you will not be affected. If you have eBooks from other sources like the library or Project Gutenberg and you want to add them to your Kindle via USB, you will not be affected. For most of us, the way we read and buy Kindle books is not going to be changing at all. So who is affected? There's just a couple of main groups, three main groups, I think. First, people who man manually manage the eBook libraries. Those 
But these are users who like to download the book files to their um, computers for backup archival purposes. Now, these are the people who um, are afraid that Amazon's gonna take their books away from them. So they feel like they need to download the book files to keep them safe. Now, technically, Amazon could do that. But why would they? And they sell books. There's two main examples I keep hearing referenced. First, back in 2009, Amazon removed unauthorized versions of 1984 and Animal Farm by George Orwell because a company without the rights to sell them added them to the Kindle store. They were still available um, from authorized, ver authorized publishers, but these ones were trying to sneak it in and Amazon removed them. They will occasionally update the book cover to make the, the latest publisher's latest version, which is sometimes annoying because everyone hates movie book covers, but sometimes those will get cha changed. And then the other example I hear about is uh, some say their versions of certain Raw Dahl books have been modified to remove words some might offensive might find offensive. And maybe it's regional, I don't know. My, my Raw Dahl books on my Kindle still call fat children fat and ugly people ugly. Um, and then the other group who are impacted are the people who download their Amazon eBooks and convert them to other formats for use on other devices, which is illegal. Uh, anyone who still owns a, a very early Kindle that can't connect to Wi-Fi, they're out of luck too. If you fall into any of these categories, you're not going to be able to download new ebook files via USB after the deadline. However, any books you've already downloaded to your computer will still be accessible via USB transfer to your Kindle. It's also important to clarify something else. This change only affects downloading to your computer. You'll still be able to add files to your Kindle via USB. You'll still be able to send, use the send to Kindle feature where Amazon sends the books to your Kindle via Wi-Fi. You'll still be able to email files to your Kindle. Do you know about that? Every Kindle has an email address. You can customize the email address. And when you send a file to that email, it'll be delivered right to your Kindle. I use this all the time for sending documents or eBooks and things that didn't come from Amazon. One more thing, the download and transfer via USB already isn't available on any new Kindle devices, already. So why is, this, why is Amazon making this change? The most likely it's primarily related to digital rights management or DRM and concerns about privacy. They want to protect their content and considering the licensing model that we've already talked about, we're not buying the books, we're buying the license to the books just like we already do with music and movies. Amazon isn't breaking any rules, they have the right to do this. Now, there are workarounds for technically savvy users who still want to back up their eBooks. The pirated eBooks are out there and we can use software like Calibre and DDRM plugins to change the file types to something universal. These methods can be a bit complicated. Um, it's illegal to circumvent DRM, so do your research, proceed with caution. But to sum everything up, unless you're someone who manually manages your eBook library by downloading Kindle eBook files or someone who likes to pirate their eBooks this change isn't gonna affect you at all. The way most of us buy and read Kindle books is staying exactly the same. I hope this has cleared up any confusion or questions about the changes to Kindle ebook downloads. In my opinion, the fluff, uh, kerfluffle on, on, online is, is it's much less of an issue than people are making it out to be. And yes, 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 I know there are folks who just hate the idea of not owning your ebook. To them, I say, Get over it, it's 2025, it's how things are done now. And if you wanna stake your moral claim on this one issue and go fight against Amazon, you're gonna lose. And you're gonna lose your chance to read. And if you're gonna fight this issue with Amazon, then you need to go fight it with Spotify, you need to go fight it with Netflix. Um, it's all the same thing. You're just gonna lose the fight and you're gonna lose the joy of reading eBooks on the best e-readers. Would I like it better if I actually owned the books? Well, sure, yeah, I mean, I would like that better, but is it gonna stop me from participating because I don't like their rules? Nope. Let me know if you have, uh, in the comments if you have any questions. Um, and always, thanks for watching One Man Book Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more bookish content and head over to onemanbookclubshop.com for these awesome t-shirts. There's tons of designs. I designed them myself, printed in the USA. Uh, design in the USA, support your local small business, you know, all of that stuff. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Like and subscribe and check out women.